spin fluids were proposed by M. Matheson in 1937, then by J. P. Vigier in 1958. The spin density was supposed to be linked to the orbital angular momentum in a rotating fluid such as a whirlpool in a gas. As a result, the spin was not randomly distributed. However, it is possible to envisage a fluid composed of tiny particles having angular momentum in addition to their linear momentum, both of which are randomly distributed in both intensity and direction. This type of fluid has very specific properties that are not found in gases or liquids. But if we assume that such a fluid fills space, light, and gravitation can receive a perfectly coherent explanation. In liquids and gases, angular moments are annihilated by friction and the complexity of the molecules. Fluids with angular momentum are therefore made up of regular spheres so that angular moments can be transmitted between particles at the same time as the momentum according to Descartes' laws. This transmission occurs during impacts between particles which undergo elastic flattening and warping. The speed of sound in air has a very simple explanation. The molecules of the air are in constant agitation, colliding with each other. The waves in the air at a regularly fluctuating speed. A fairly simple calculation shows that the speed of waves in the air is the square mean of the agitation speeds of the molecules in the air. The speed of waves in the ether can be explained in exactly the same way. The speed of the waves in the ether is the square mean of the agitation speeds of the particles of the ether. The amplitude of a tsunami remains maximum in its direction of propagation over hundreds of kilometers. Sound in the air is more directional as the frequency is higher. We now know how to produce ultra-directional sound waves. You must position yourself in line with the speaker equipped with peripheral ultrasonic emitters to hear the voice or music. Ultrasound thus has localized effects. In the ether, the vibrations of an electron cause two trains of symmetrical waves whose transverse surfaces remain invariable over very large distances since the particles of the ether are very regular spheres. In these conditions, they do not drag their neighbors along. Such wave trains can therefore have effects similar to a corpuscle. This is the case of the photoelectric effect. Waves in the ether can split into two wave trains and interfere. We also obtain interference with electrons, carbon-60 molecules, and even with large organic molecules. Unlike the waves generated here in water, these electrons and molecules move at very low speeds compared to the speed of light. As a result, the waves they form as they move through the ether precede them. They interfere and cause a distribution of these elements in the space located after the slits. Areas of high pressure push electrons, atoms, or molecules toward low pressures that remain aligned in the direction of the bands that form on the receiving device. When two of these particles collide, the momentum is transmitted according to Descartes' laws. The elastic deformation of the ether particles prevents the particles from sliding over each other due to the flattening of the parts in contact. During the oscillations of the electrons, they transmit their momentum to the ether particles, but also their angular momentum. Angular moments can only be transmitted transversely. This characteristic explains the transverse nature of light. Each wave train is therefore polarized in the orientation of the angular momentum of the emitting electron. Gravitational waves travel at the speed of light. These waves are also waves of the ether. They are emitted by the movements of the stars at extremely low frequencies below 300 Hz at the same time as light waves which exceed frequencies of 4 to the power 14 Hz. 
The oscillations of the electrons cause the formation of two symmetrical wave trains. The orientation of the polarization is directly linked to the orientation of the angular momentum of the emitting electron. The polarization angles of the two wave trains are therefore identical and are defined upon transmission. If no external action comes to modify this angle, it remains unchanged whatever the distance traveled by the wave trains. The two wave trains are entangled from the moment of emission. The Orsay experiment, also known as the aspect experiment, therefore poses no problem. The polarization state is obviously the same for the two symmetrical wave trains emitted by the vibrations of the electrons. The wave trains of the ether essentially result from the oscillations of electrons. But there is nothing to confirm that these wave trains are electromagnetic in themselves. In the same way, the vibration of a piano string causes trains of waves in the air. These waves in the air are pressure waves. We talk about sound waves, but in reality they are only sound to our ear. Conversely, a train of waves from the ether can make an electron oscillate exactly as a pressure wave in the air makes the membrane of the microphone vibrate. However, the oscillations of the electrons are alternating currents in the conductors. This is exactly what happens in Hertz's experiment. The appearance of galaxies the solar system and the rings of the planets is irremediably reminiscent of whirlpools. However, for a whirlpool to form, Hamilton's principle requires the presence of condensation. These whirlpools therefore have a cause, the condensation of the ether in matter. The whirlpool of the sun causes the planets to rotate. The tangential speed of this whirlpool must therefore be proportional to the inverse of the square root of the distance from the sun. Unfortunately, these whirlpools in perfect fluid have a tangential speed proportional to the inverse of the distance from the center of the well. This result is taken from the Lagrange equation, the energy equation. But then, there is a solution. Since the ether particles are animated not only by linear Brownian motion, but also by angular momentum, then the principle of equipartition of energy exactly doubles the energy term in the equation of Lagrange whose solution is then a tangential speed proportional to the inverse of the square root of the distance to the center of the well. The law of condensation flows in space is 1 over r squared for all incompressible fluids. On the other hand, the condensation flow and the ether drag are both proportional to the outer surface area of the atom's nuclei. For them to be proportional to their mass, it is enough for the nuclei to be bubbles and not solid balls. We thus find Newton's law. The condensation of ether in matter is the cause of gravity. But, the thickness of these bubbles would also have to be the same for all the atoms. This is not exactly the case. The thickness varies very slightly. This explains the mass defect, the order of magnitude of which is 10 to the power minus 24 grams. The deflection of light by the sun is a remarkable fact that Descartes foresaw almost 400 years ago. The condensation of ether in the sun causes a deviation of the wave trains, and therefore in particular of the light which reaches us from the stars. Since the ether condenses in matter, the nuclei of the atoms must therefore grow gradually. The light that reaches us from very distant galaxies was emitted billions of years earlier. At that time the nuclei were smaller and therefore emitted red-shifted light compared to the emission of the same atoms today on Earth. It is therefore completely useless to suppose that galaxies are moving away from us at speeds, even apparent, which could greatly exceed the speed of light. There was no Big Bang.
In application of Poincaré's theorem, the whirlpool concentrates in a plane which is the main plane of galaxies and the equatorial plane of stars and planets. On each side of this equatorial whirlpool, the ether also condenses so that whirlpools must appear and so on up to the poles. The zones thus formed are separated by swirling cones giving the zones alternating inverse rotations. This explains the zonal appearance of the planets. The ether causes the gases surrounding the planets to rotate. This is the case for Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The zones formed by these gases themselves form gas whirlpools through friction at their interfaces, as can be seen up to the pole of Jupiter. Earth's ocean currents also have a distinctly zonal nature. The phenomenon is also indisputable for terrestrial winds although it is less obvious. The rotation of the Sun on itself is essentially zonal. The inclinations of comet trajectories relative to the equatorial plane of the Sun have a zonal distribution. Retrograde comets are in the gaps in this distribution. The solar system has a zonal characteristic. The stars of galaxies are concentrated in their main plane. All the stars must grow, but if their density is greater inside than on the surface, the central part will grow faster than the periphery which will be stretched. The Earth's crust, in particular, expands mainly in the thinnest areas, at the bottom of the oceans. In addition, there are regular magmatic eruptions which lower the Earth's internal pressure. This explains the volcanoes, earthquakes, and large mountain ranges that emerged from the bottom of ancient seas. In Sagnac's experiment, the disk carrying the mirror rotates relative to the ether in which we are immersed and the rotation can be detected. This is the principle of laser gyros. Professor Sellery demonstrated that this fact cannot be explained by the relativity theory. On the other hand, Michelson's experiment did not succeed to detect the speed of the Earth around the Sun. In fact, Dayton Miller made hundreds of measurements with a Michelson interferometer and found speeds of almost 10 km per second. Professor Alice analyzed Miller's measurements. He demonstrated that they cannot in any case result from variations in local temperature. He had already noted that these speeds are linked to the position of the sun and therefore maximum at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. when the interferometer is in a plane containing the sun. But, in the ether filling space, the condensation of the ether in the galaxy must also be taken into account. The tangential velocities in the solar system as in the galaxy cannot have any effect since the Earth is dragged by the corresponding whirlpools. But on the other hand, the radial velocities are perfectly observable. The curves obtained by calculating the geometric sums of the radial velocities correspond to the curves obtained by Professor Alice from Miller's measurements. A Michelson interferometer placed in a satellite weightless with respect to the Earth and therefore also with respect to the Sun, could map the speeds of the ether flows and thus confirm both the theory of whirlpools and the statistics of Professor Alice. In water and air, the angular kinetic energy of the whirlpools is exactly equal to the angular kinetic energy of the fluid particles. On the other hand, in the ether, the angular kinetic energy of the whirlpools is twice that of the ether particles. Compensation is carried out by absorption of the angular kinetic energy of the ether particles until its cancellation when the tangential speed returns to the law in 1 on r according to the dotted red curve. In the same way, close to the sun where the rotation speed is very high, the law of tangential speeds is no longer exactly the inverse of the square root of the distance. This is the case for the planet Mercury. 
The light reflected by the electrons of the K layer of the Sun is polarized due to the total absorption of the angular momentum particles of the ether near the Sun. But the same phenomenon occurs in the galaxy. An instrumented diaphragm tube made it possible to observe the double polarization of the K layer of the Sun. As in atmospheric cyclones and whirlpools in water, the tangential velocity of the ether near the eye of galaxies may be so high that a calm zone is formed devoid of matter and therefore emitting no light, a black hole. The ether, made up of a fluid with kinetic moments, makes it possible to explain very simply all the phenomena linked to light and gravitation.